in the Bay Area, about 70 to 100 percent of environmental health hazards are in kind of communities of color, like Richmond, Oakland, East Palo Alto, and other places like that. So they have these kind of compounded risk, not only the environmental health hazards of air quality and pollution, which actually increase with, you know, um, increase heat and et cetera, but they also have risk of just kind of not having access to resources, you know. Um, so the low-income communities don't have ac uh, ability to have clean uh, public transit near, near them. They have concerns about getting the transportation. There's a, uh, a problem around that. Um, issues of just um, jobs. There's a lot of joblessness. And I think sometimes we talk about climate change. Unemployment is a really part of that, too. How can you actually afford to be able to take action um, on behalf of yourself and your family? Um, access to clean and healthy food. You know, um, healthy food options are a concern in the communities. Um, and also various other health ailments that I think a lot of our communities actually have. You know, if you have an obesity problem or if you have other, you know, asthma or other respiratory illnesses or anything like that, like that, that triggers and concerns around how to be able to, to basically move and maneuver yourself out of that. So I think those are some of the issues that we've been addressing in our work is that some of those social vulnerabilities are just there and then you compound it with climate change, you're even more at risk. And so some of the work that we've been trying to do is trying to really assess in these community-based, you know, the community bases where there's vulnerable communities are at, just to try to figure out what do they actually need, what kind of resources and capacities do they need, and do kind of community-based training and education in those areas to kind of figure out how they need to prepare, how they need to uh, address the risk, and also how to connect it to their real day-to-day -day lives. You know, climate is a new, like a, another compounded issue that is facing communities. So how do you address this issue when you have other concerns, you know, your health, access to health care, immigration issues, et cetera? How do you talk about climate in that real-time sense? So talking about preparedness and what they need to do to be prepared is pretty much, you know, kind of a... If they are the 10 type of priorities, it's probably like one of the last priorities about like, how do we prepare for climate change, you know? So I think the reality is that, you know, the vulnerabilities are, are, are existing. And so how do we really move the conversation forward to really get them to talk about climate, understand sea level rise, understand heat issues, talk about the drought, which is a very popular issue, and talk about energy. You know, a lot of people talk about clean energy as well. So how do we talk about those things in relation to the, the challenges of climate change, but also addressing their social vulnerabilities? Thank you.